Hey everybody, welcome to Myopia Movies. This week we are talking about The Mask. That's right, we're starting season 11 by revisiting an old classic uh, like we did last year. Uh, we thought it was fun enough that we might do it going forward. This Jim Carrey classic from 1994 is big, it's over the top, it's silly, uh, and we had a lot of fun. In fact, uh, I, Noor edited this episode. He's like, sorry it took so long, I didn't realize it was a 90 minute episode. Well. Congratulations. We're passing the savings on to you. Anyway, we'd like to thank you for listening and subscribing. As we enter our 11th season, we appreciate you, and thank you for all you do. Bye, everyone. They call me Hoffman, Pete. <laughs> I'm the king of the rumba beat, and I wake up a podcast that goes chick chicky boom chick chicky boom and ladies and gentlemen we are revisiting the mask 1994 jim carrey's classic version and i'm here with myself nick hoffman host of my opia podcasts and riff on center problem panel we've got nortronet local to atlanta as well refer on center prov and matthew w quinn hey pachuco <laughs> Dude, ladies and gentlemen, this is the greatest, whitest movie we've ever done. No. Um, yeah, it kind of is. Other than the mayor. Uh, the, ma- the mayor's like, harumph! Was I there, am a black, angry man. Where was well, he saved, well, he saves our protagonist at the end from getting r- nailed, so yeah. good for him. He's the black savior. Oh, and oh, the actual mayor. I think he said the movie. There's a movie called The Mayor. But I, Could I you thought, imagine there was a movie called The Mayor we were about to do? Well, there's a movie called The Wiz that's really black. That's right. In, very, very I, I actually saw that in middle school, at least yeah, parts of it. Yeah, yeah. Michael Jackson, Diana Ross. Uh, Richard Pryor was the man behind the curtain. He was. Yeah. But let's talk of about some, he is. Yeah, but let's talk about something else that's green. Okay, so um I love this movie. Mm. I own this movie on DVD and on soundtrack, and I must have listened to uh, Hey Pachuco and Cuban Pete a thousand times. Yeah. For, for those of you who don't know, we actually watch the movie. Uh, we, we do watch these movies, we and, do. and this is a movie that we watched uh, together. together right oh, before. I loved watching it together. So it's all fresh in our heads. Right, and so um, there, was, there, there was a scene, basically there was a oh song, and I thought you know this was a very classic performance from our lead actor and I was like Nick what are you singing as like as this from what where is this from he said the soundtrack I was like what Casablanca he's like no the movie the so you own the soundtrack to I the mouths and How I m- got it from Columbia Record Company okay um, okay where for those of you who are younger than 50 um, what you would do is in the back of a magazine you would fill out a form what's a and magazine have little stamps and you could stick those stamps Stamps to a thing, and you would get um, the first album for ten bucks, and each other one for a penny plus three dollars shipping. So for fifteen bucks, you get like eight albums, and then the expectation was every like month they'd send you another album, and you could either keep it or return it. But I would just cancel it and send them back, and so for fifteen bucks twice, I got like thirty albums. Wow. Yeah. You were the original Napster. I was. Yeah. Uh-oh. Some guys in a rat tail are going to come here and put a golf oh, tee no, in your that mouth. Oh, company's long gone bankrupt because of people like me and my family. LimeWire or Napster? No, Columbia Record Company and Columbia Film Company because you could also do this with movies. Um, although the movies thing I didn't really get into. I um, Matt might remember this, uh, but on Johnson's Ferry, there was a, a Hollywood video and after a movie was done being important, you could get them for like three for five bucks. And so I filled out my movie collection with those old like shitty films that no one cared about. Now I will say this particular movie I did buy um, 1984's The Mask starring James Carey. Um, I, I, I forget how I first saw it, I'll, I'll be honest. But I saw them all, Dumb and Dumber, Liar, Liar, uh, previous episodes, Batman Return. I cried a little bit at the Truman Show. Oh. And, and so, like, this movie ended up in my possession, and I forget exactly why. If I had to blame someone, which I will right now, it'll be uh, my friend Michael, uh, uh, younger brother of Zach Kraus. Um, you hear that, Mike? Yeah. Mike! Mike! Um, but... He was just the dude because again, I'm the oldest in my family, which is um, a detriment. You look when, good. 
Thank you. Um, when you want to watch movies, because you need an older brother to get you the, the R-rated movies when you're too young to yeah, see them. Yeah. And Michael, of course, had an older brother, and he had a friend uh, who also had an older brother. And they, so we saw all the R-rated movies too early. Uh, and so this movie just feels like... This movie's rated R? No, it's PG-13, okay. but it was the kind that my parents wouldn't have let yeah. me get. Because, yeah, yeah. Because he's a really modest guy. Although he's the hottest guy in Havana. In Havana. Ladies and gentlemen, he's been doing this for an hour after the movie. Um, hey, Pachuco! But, um. One to three. I will say this. I want to see. I, I, this is actually sitting down with everyone. It was. I, I, I got to see the movie in full. I would see bits and pieces of it, you know. Um, my mother does not like uh, J- Jim Carrey, and I'm like, why? My first Jim Carrey movie, honestly, I, you know what? I'm, it was probably Batman uh, Forever, but uh, my mom was versed in knowledge and saw his performance in this is like you know what he's not my cup of tea but the the beauty the beauty about jim uh james carey is that he's such an incredible person and i just love the the fucking range of this movie that he has on him and just like because what this is this is the same time he did dumb and dumber there was like a two movie picture deal with columbia some some of the you you, you, you spitted some facts with me and and i think he got a heavily paid to the point where um and uh, you can look up the details but like he, he, I heard he was on Oprah. He said uh, he wrote a, a a check for himself for like a million dollars, and and he would by the end of that year he would have it. And then the next year or whatever, he did those back to back to back to backs, and he made a, a hunky hunk a hunk full of change. Yeah, so I'll, I'll explain the story you said, which almost made sense. Thank you. Uh, no, you know I'm nothing here. No, I said that. Lovingly. I'm nothing here if not supportive. Don't you try. Yes. Uh, so 1994, he made Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. And then um, that movie turned out to be the biggest thing that had ever happened. Slice bread. Uh, like, <laughs> despite, um, to quote um, uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, he goes, uh, you know, it's my favorite movie. You know, despite the transphobic ending, it's very funny. <laughs> Um, what episode was that? While he was on li- in Living Cover, uh, in Living Color, yes. which went from ninety to ninety four, right? Yes. And then, uh, so ninety four, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, biggest movie that had ever happened. Uh, but he had already signed two other contracts, so he couldn't do anything about it. So then this came out, The Mask, and then the next month, Dumb and Dumber came out. And uh, he showed up as the mask two other places, including in a Tone Loke video uh, where he was Ace Ventura, and then Cuban Pete became a music video. And then the next year he came out in Batman Forever, mm. which was the biggest contract a man had ever gotten in a movie. Um, and Tommy Lee Jones, who I think is a better actor, no offense, Jim, um, became second fiddle because the Riddler was going to be Jim Carrey. And there's even rumors that they dangled it in front of a Robin, Robin Williams, Williams to just take it away from him yeah. because of Jim Carrey's production. And then the year... Um, and also in 95, same year as Ace, as Batman Forever is Ace Ventura When Nature Calls. The next year is The Cable Guy. And then the next year after that is Liar Liar and The Truman Show. And then the year after that is... Uh, Man in the Moon, and the year after that is Me, Myself, and Irene, and previous episode, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. The man worked like a dog Not and to... made comedy hit after comedy Previous hit. episode, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, which is awesome. Not to sound like Daniel, but I heard during Batman Forever <laughs> that Tommy Lee Jones fucking hated Jim Carrey because just, I don't know. If you just think about it. First of all, I believe it. Yes. And second of all, it's because they are on two different planets. Yeah. Like, because Tommy Sativa Lee Jones... and Indica, yes. Because, well, yes. A and two. Um, I don't think I could watch it on a Sativa. But... Um, you need some milled out, man. <laughs> that movie is so tuned up. You need it on, like, a, a four loco. The Forever? 
Batman? Batman Forever? Oh, I love those. I can Dude, watch those sober. I will I not watch those. tell you a bad thing about those movies. Never. Like, here's the thing. Not one bad Batman thing. Batman and Batman Returns are Academy Award noms. Forever and Return and um, Infinite, whatever the last one Batman is. Batman Robin. Robin. Uh. They're garbage. But they're fun to watch. So fun to watch. They are fun so to watch. Fun. And they did what the the companies wanted them to do, which was sell toys because it, it, it was, I was the demographic. Well, and here's, and and here's the thing: I, Zack Snyder movies are g- dark and depressing. I need a little joy and levity. At the moment, I think you like camp. You like Adam West. I'd rather put on one of those than a Zack Snyder film. Yeah. To, yeah okay. So yeah. we're done recording yeah. in twenty in an hour. <laughs> In Back three days when we're finished recording, do you want me to put on what? Batman 66? Batman Forever? Or what? Batman versus Superman? You're going to pick Batman Forever, right? Martha. What did you say? <laughs> oh no, the world's ending. There's seven 9 11s in that movie. Right? Right. At the beginning yeah. of it, like Bruce Wayne is cuddling a child yeah. while eight towers come down around him and he's like, Superman! So the mask. Um, Matt, can Great you movie. give us the plot synopsis of the okay. mask? All right, so... Um, I heard his name is Cuban Pete. And he's the king of the rumba beat. And he shakes his maracas. They go, chick, chicky, boom, boom chick, chick, chicky, chicky, boom, chick, chicky, boom. He's the modest guy, I have but so, he's the hottest guy. I have FOMO so bad. I don't know. Did y'all rehearse this? Or you just knew this? No, you just made it up. Oh. I looked into his baby blues, and I just came up with it, you know. So, all right. So, in Edge City, which is maybe New York, we have a banker named Stanley uh, Ip- Edge named City. Stanley Ipkiss, who's real nice, but also kind of a doormat who everyone just takes advantage of him. And then one night after a conga line of humiliation, including getting chucked in a gutter and being and having this terrible loner car inflicted on him, he tries to save what he thinks is a drowning man. It turns out it's the mask of the Norse god Loki. That sets loose his id. And Stanley Ipkiss really loves Tex Avery cartoons. Yeah. But there's, but there's also this gangster who is up to no good. Yeah. And who, wait, who's the gangster's name? This that is, char- actor is Dorian Tyrell. So if you don't know... What's the character's name? Yeah. Dor- Dorian Tyrell. It's one of those... You, it's one of those actors that you know the face but don't know the name. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I looked him up when we were watching the movie. He plays a lot of villains. Yes. And I hate that he's typecasted like that. But honestly, if I were to cast... Is he still alive? Yeah, he's still yeah, alive. Yeah, he's still alive. I would cast him as my villain. Because he's... Such a good villain. Such a good villain. Even though later in the movie, he kind of turns into Tim Curry from a legend. You know what, though? Tim Curry, and I love Tim Curry, and I, I just wish Candace was here because she'd kick me in the balls, which, you know, you oh have my. to pay for. Don't say anything about Rocky Horror. No, I was just going to say. Or Muppet Treasure Tim Island. Tim Curry doesn't have this intensity. You know, like... And again, okay. I know... I see more his right, voice. Right. So I, I'll, I'll challenge you in this. And no, I, I agree th- with you, Matt. I, I do. It the just- voice. No, no, no. I'm so glad he said the voice. I challenge both y'all this. And I don't know if y'all, if we, if you guys are deep in the cut with the uh, just Batman or DC animated uh, series of sorts. So I heard it was a running between uh, the, the for the Joker character for the Batman animated series, Mark Hamill, and Tim Curry. I believe it, yes. And they said Tim Curry was too fucking dark <laughs> and scary. I believe it. Yeah. Yeah. Look it up. And, and and I don't know. I think there's so much camp to this movie that I don't think anybody else... You've seen it in the fucking sequel. Nobody else can play this character, character no, I like agree. Jim Curry. You know what I mean? Like, if there was a sequel, there were two masks. You could almost do it. <laughs> well, there's a, like, and I know that's how this movie ends. <laughs> But yeah. like, so, and and Matt's synopsis was perfect. But like, this, the whole thing is, this is theoretically a superhero. Yeah, movie, I guess because it was it's, based on a comic book, but it, the comic book was a lot darker. 
What was it? Was like rent? Uh, uh, what was his two rinsing stems? Rinse? Stems, not not Ren and Stimpy. Ren and Stimpy. Yeah, kind, of, kind of those. In or? the in, in the comics, Ipkiss just ended up taking had a lot of repressed anger for everyone picking on him as he was turned into a monster and took revenge on everybody. Here he goes through that phase and about five minutes has been most of the movie being a goofball yeah it's it's a it's a dark horse comic uh, and like actually uh to matt's point the closest we get to it um early on in the movie uh stanley because his car is in the shop and uh they, they're gonna charge him a million dollars and he was gonna just get an oil change but they're gonna replace the transmission and the brakes and everything and later the mask shoves mufflers up their tailpipes, so to speak. <laughs> I want the best proctologist stat. <laughs> but that that's the closest we get to the original mask, right? Like yeah. that that's the kind of thing he would be doing. It, No, that 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 was wild. Um but I guess to talk about the cast, because there's another important uh character that uh was this her first movie yes that's crazy introducing cameron diaz right this was an amazing first performance by cameron diaz you know what i mean and like I, she played the part very well um classy when she needed to be classy if she needed to be swept off her feet dance all that kind of stuff. swept off her feet and up in the air and around and around and around, and around. Um and no, I, I I think and they had great chemistry. I didn't, I don't know people people the girls girls like the silly Jim Carrey type because if you think of the girls that Jim's Carrey been with, it, it, it's surprised. I'm like, okay, Jim, um, you know, uh, but no, I think it was a I. <laughs> I dare to find any comedic flaw in this movie for what it was. If no, you, it's very tight. Yeah, yeah. Comedic it's very, very tight. tight. It's That's, very tight. Yeah, we get to the mask in maybe about 10 minutes. Yeah, well, yeah. And I will say something that Nora keep pointing out while we were doing the movie. How many things ripped this off? I mean, you were pointing specifically to Bruce Almighty, which we yeah. said was just a movie based on... Okay. Hey, Jim, do Jim things to Jim, 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 because yeah. it makes a lot of Jim Carrey references. Yeah. But even like when he first meets Cameron Diaz and he's shaking her hand so much that she's like jiggling around. Um, that's an Austin Powers joke three years later where he goes, I love shaking hands. And he shakes her hand and he goes, and I'm sp- Bent. And here's the thing about Mike Myers. I, I'm not going to say a bad thing about the movies of his I like. He does a lot of garbage nowadays. The man had comedic timing. He just yeah. hit the same jokes it's so silent. many times that dog is long dead. You know, so you're not a fan silent. of the love guru, I take it? I like the love guru. You're a bad person. <laughs> um, but he also came out a movie recently, <laughs> a show on Netflix called... The like, Hexagonix Pilot Pol- Shapes. Yeah, like the the center, the triumvirate, something, yeah, whatever it's, it is. It's it's such a beautiful premise, but I don't know what happened. I watched the first episode and I was like, "There's everything else to watch on TV." So you were saying you were spent? I was done. My my favorite favorite. I'm sp- one of my favorite awesome powers lines is like he's I think it's the first one he's going down the casino and someone he goes to somebody and he's just like hey there you are and he's like he's like where do I know you do I know he's like yeah you're there (laughs) classic I I do like the scene where he's next to Tom Arnold in the turlet and he goes who does number two work for he goes you you tell that turd who's (laughs) fun Uh, and then, like, the funny part of this is, like, they get out of the stall. It's like, hey, buddy, what did you eat? Oh, Tom Arnold. Um, Previous but, episode, The Stupids. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I forgot about that. We've done a lot of these. 500 episodes in a little bit halfway through next season. About four years in for me. That's what, is that four seasons? 
You have been a part of this for about three and a half, four seasons. Yeah, six seasons in a movie. Um, but no, I um, uh, it it uh, James Jim, uh, just to talk about him because I don't know. I'm a, I'm a huge comedic fan. We, uh, to your point about uh, and there was a wonderful fact. I believe, I don't know. Someone said this about how much money um, the production saved by simply just having that prosthetic yeah. of mask on him because they didn't have to animate it or something like that because there's a lot of 90s cgi in this movie and yeah but he's a lot of it's him spinning around like a tornado so it doesn't have to be pretty well what year did who framed roger rabbit came 89 so and like I, I here's the thing that i said and nick you made a good point too um is that the what this maybe how much was this, the budgets the quality of the movie is not the same as it is now you mentioned like a movie like that can be made for 50 and if as long as it makes about like 10 back it's good but well okay so the mask uh, made 23 oh, it cost 23 million to make right and made 350 million back that's that's a lot, but here's the thing. Adjusted for inflation, we're talking, what, $50, 60000000 million? Okay. And so that means it made $700 million. Great. But they don't make movies for 60 or $70 million anymore. Inflation is real. Well, it's not just the inflation thing. It's just that, so, and this is just me as a historian type, a million years ago when they invented the Megaplex, the idea was... We don't have to just show big movies. We can show small movies and indie movies. We can show all sorts of movies. But instead, it turned out, like, what if we put Star Wars on six screens? Fine. Movies like this, which were medium budget and could make a lot of money, this one ended up making a lot of money. So it's A lot of movies we... That we don't talk about cost the same amount of money, lost money, or broke even. Not anymore. Mm. Nowadays, those big production companies, Disney, Universal, that's kind of it nowadays. Paramount. Unless you want to do A24. A24 is more indie, though. Chef's kiss to shout out to them. But they are making those types of movies, though. They, you know they, I mean? they are, but they're few and far between. Yeah. Um, they try to make these massive pictures otherwise. And here's the thing. Marvel movies have been terrible lately. And I'm not saying quality. I'm just talking about money coming back. The Marvels lost money. Like, all these things lost money. It's, I mean, at the end of the Deadpool day. Deadpool might break even. True. I mean, I look at I I to, okay to, to they brought back huge jacked men as you call huge them. Huge jacked man. Uh, to that point, we give out mass on that. I, I view that the same way as uh, and shout out to Michael Keaton in the movie Founder because that's how I found out how McDonald's became McDonald's. It's all about real estate. I took a great nap huh? during that movie. Oh, God. You, you 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 could sleep for days during that. Movie. What? I found how well I could sleep. But basically, he bought he bought the real estate in which the McDonald's could potentially purchase. So the McDonald's had to buy it from him. And to your point, the movies because I didn't know I grew up in like the, I, the earliest movie I saw was uh, was uh, the Phantom Menace. That's the first movie I kind of in Snow Dogs. That was the movies I remember growing. In, but, but there were like multiple. So which one should we revisit? Snow, Snow Dogs. Dogs. Yeah. <laughs> Something about- we have talked about the mask for seven seconds. Uh, I, he, because it's such a good movie, we usually make fun of movies. But like, so at what point does he get to shove a muffler up the ass of the? Uh, so let's the, break within this- tw- no more than twenty minutes. Like they get to this real quick. The movie's only about an hour and a half. I know, and we've been talking for twenty minutes. So, so I guess scene by scene, I guess. So like, no, ba- Matt, 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 Matt. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll yeah, give yeah. it to you. What what makes him a loser in our mind? He's mm. just he's just so nice. People take advantage of him. So who takes advantage of him? Well, first that girl, that woman he's asking out for the bank. He'd gotten her, he'd gotten her and him tickets to see a concert or something, and she said she had a friend out of town. She's so like, okay, you can have the tickets. 
Right. And I think it strikes and Cameron Diaz comes in. That that's um that's later. And then his friend is she takes him to the club and they just throw him out. And no, the mechanics take advantage no, of Cameron him. Cameron Diaz shows up for the first three minutes. Three, she does. Two minutes and she forty three seconds. She comes in because she sees him at the club. And she's asking for um to open up an account, but she's not opening an account. She's using her purse to like film the people going in and out of the safe and um i should mention just for a minute here he is a scumbag buddy (laughs) who is desperately trying to get it wet and the women that matt alluded to at the club they're escorts right like he was can you imagine him picking up a woman I mean, I watched. He Seinf- looks decent in a suit. I watched Seinfeld. Uh, George had had Marissa t- uh, Tomei. Yes. So, who knows in the nineties? There's no arguing taste. That's what I'm saying. That's what I tell my wife all the time. <laughs> yeah, no, she watched- chose me. I can't. I, I don't know why. I said, I mean, that's his whole arc in this movie is that he the mask helps him develop self confidence. Pretty much, right? Like, mm. if if you, I guess if you're a writer, make sure your character has an arc. His arc is to develop self confidence, right? Because he he's Jim Carrey. He's a good looking dude, but the first ten minutes, twenty minutes, he's just a damp rag like he's yeah. a loser uh and so he's like all of the toby mcguire spider-man peter parkers not spider-man peter parkers and i will say everything we're mentioning comes later it's funny how much this movie shows up in other things like and i mentioned this when we were watching it but like his laugh even his cackle his hey boys is the riddler from the next year yeah you think like, he phoned you th- so you think he phoned in the riddler no i just think that um joel schumacher saw this and said what if we did it with a real budget like truly like this movie is like cheap as free at times and honest to god like you could do a lot with more budget if this had a joel schumacher budget who knows? Man, wouldn't you give anything to watch the Robin Williams versions of the uh, Riddler? Come I mean, on. Yes, but he would, and he would play at camp, not crotch. I know, I know, I know, man. I, <laughs> part of me wants that. I, I it does, but at the same time, like he's twenty years older than Jim Carrey, and like I wish there was more Robin Williams in this world. I really yeah. do, because I love the man. But like. The, uh, smoochie, the Jim Carrey one. Smoochie, Jim Carrey. Uh, uh, for years, I would go, riddle me this, riddle me that. Who's afraid of the big black bat? I literally said in the office, that's a spicy meatball. And no one laughed. Welcome to my world. No one, no one, none of the kids I work with think my jokes are funny, except maybe because if I'm a they are 40 years younger than you, child. That's true, too. People, I, I'm at that age right now where I'm crossing into like the uncle who wants to be cool, you know? Okay, so, um, Teach me about. Life. I have a doctorate, and I have my full regalia, like with the flounce and the hat and the tam and the red. And a girl goes, "You have a beignet? Man, you ate?" And I had to look that up, and I was like, "Oh, that's a good thing." Did, did she say your outfit slapped? No, no. She you, said you, you ate. ate that outfit up. Yes. Yeah. Someone. So no, no. They didn't even add up. They just said you, you ate. ate. Yeah. You so, ate. so interesting enough, since we're talking about Gen Z. Uh, um, a term of they call them Cuban. People. So check this out. So you know how I say word, word. Yeah. So now people are saying period. Yeah. I don't get it. I think no, they, they say it at the end of a statement as though they are making the statement. Yo, dude, fuck you. Period. Word. Yeah. Period. <laughs> 
That's what it is. <laughs> That's no. what it is. That's what it is. It's Dude, like, I will never ever replace. I should have a, if uh, 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 I should have a myopia uh, quote shirt and it should say word. Like, yeah. That's just that's just me. But okay, back no, to no, me. no, no, no. And it's not up here by your nips. It's down there it's by down. your belly button. <laughs> because the whole conversation has happened. And at the bottom, you just say word. word? <laughs> right? No, or anything to say? Nah. Sure. Word. Yeah, yeah word. at the top left breast, yeah. it just says nah. Nah. And at the bottom, it just says <laughs> word. Word. <laughs> um, but All yeah, right, no. So, so catch us up. Let's do this. Yeah. Uh, so. Stanley Ipkiss is a loser. We get that from various points. Um, no one in the office respects him except for the office pervert. Um, and they're just trying to get into the club. At home, he has a dog, but his landlady is a bitch. Oh. Uh, who's going to get shot in the face Fucking, with a hammer? If there was a dog Oscars. A dog Oscars. A dog Oscars. Between this one and Wishbone. Wishbone. And, anyone remember? Like, Wishbone? No, same type of dog. It's, oh. a, it's a Boston Terrier, I believe. I thought Wishbone was a Jack Russell. Isn't this a Jack Russell? Mm, it, it doesn't, doesn't look... Oh, boy, I have to look this up. But, like, not even uh, whatever the fucking elephant was from uh, um, Operation Dumbo with drop. the... J- drop, yeah. Um, not even fucking Air Bud. Not even fucking the monkey from The Hangovers. I put the this dog's emotional facial acting performance up against any okay. other animal okay even the, that motherfucker from the artist okay the dog in this one is called max um from the mask and a 2000 movie called mr accident mm-hmm. best dog good he's just dog yeah. oscars dog oscars but um but no um and then the landlord from from hell no. yeah you know, like uh, you're too loud, Epcast. Ah. Who cares what late I come in tomorrow? Okay, so own Max house. is a Jack Russell Terrier. Yeah. yeah, they're all Jack Russell. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I get it. You know, he's he's definitely talking to those bad out of luck people. And and think about it. When does the dude from Bears and Fails Bureau as the teacher come in? He is is he like later? In the third act, like the last half hour. <laughs> we were just I guess we were talking about him no, in the earlier. I mean, like sense. after he like gets his car taken advantage of, he gets kicked out of the club because he's not cool enough. He sees Cameron Diaz, like all of it falls apart. And like after the he tries to get in the club but can't he's driving the loner car and the loner car breaks down in the middle of like this giant bridge in the middle of nowhere and he sees what looks like a body floating down the river and he thinks someone's in trouble so he jumps over the bridge tries to save the person and the cops look down on him like to make sure he's okay And all he finds on top of it is this, like, weird wooden mask. Think of, like, the the theater masks. Yeah. But wood and green. That's the mask of the mask. Um, And then his adventures begin. You know, it's like, imagine taking a shot of angel's dust and uh, having, I guess, I don't know, Will Smith be your motivational speaker whilst the devil caresses you. I guess I'm trying to convey the level of confidence. Well, what what comes out of this mask? I mean, like, I will say the weird thing about that we haven't, I guess, talked about that ties into all of this is he likes to watch cartoons. Mm. So at the end of his long, bad day, he's watching, like, old Chuck Jones, like, Looney Tunes shit, Uh, which matters because when he eventually tries to put on the mask, he becomes, like, literally a Looney Tune come to life. Yeah. No. People, I've read reviews, critiques of this, say that, like, the mask in real life is much darker yeah. Fine. This is pretty fucking dark. <laughs> like, so. Wait, what? Yeah. What do you mean dark? I mean, he does stick mufflers up people's asses. Like. 
Oh. You take away Jim Carrey. Look, okay, so just take this same well, thing. Okay. And put Michael Shannon instead of Jim Carrey. Somebody stop me. And he's just like doing the exact same shit. That's who needs to be the next. Wait, did you say Michael Sarah or Michael Shannon? Shannon. Okay. The guy I was, who played Thanos. Oh, no. That's that Josh was Brolin. Josh Brolin. He played Zod. Oh, right. Yes, yes. But so check this out. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Somebody stop me. How about Michael Sarah? I, oh, gosh. I'm so sorry. sorry. Can somebody stop me, please? Oh. Okay, oh, okay, geez. okay, 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 okay. I see what you're saying. I, I guess I'm going in the angle that the mask can uh, bring out the, I guess, the devil the in you. The Loki. Islands. The Loki, the Loki in you. Oh, dude. A mischief. Hello there. Hello there. Um, but yeah. So what's the first thing? What's the first thing he do, does when he gets the mask? Well, other than stick it to his uh, uh, landlord. Oh, you, yes, 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 yes. But uh, I do like it. He ends up on the street and he does the. <laughs> they're trying to communicate. Oh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 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 and then these guy, these these uh, leatherheads try to mug him, and he ends up making balloon, making them balloon animals. That ends with my personal favorite, a Tommy gun. I do like he pulls the used condom out of his pocket. And goes, <laughs> wrong pocket. Oh God, yeah, my mom did not like this man. Um, but I guess it's one of those things you miss. When you're what six years old? It's yeah, like, oh, I don't remember that. What's wrong with that balloon? Um, yeah, and then after that, where does he go? Does he wake up or th- he wakes up? And now we meet Officer Calloway, who's a very clever detective, but he is such an asshole that didn't really help him that much. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, he's the one straight man in the entire picture, kind of. Like he knows Ipkiss isn't isn't. Is a, knows more than he's letting on, or at least he should. Like, they were outside your door. <laughs> but he is such a just j- curmudgeon the entire time. Yeah. I mean, I kind of like it. And what's that actor's name? Either that or he has uh, a grandkid that looks exactly like him from kids' movies. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, so I guess they're just investigating the disturbance from the uh, apartment complex uh, with the antics that happen. Yeah, because he that. smashed a, a clock with a mallet in front of her door. She comes out with a gun, and he starts. She's, she unloads, like, six shots at him while he's bouncing up and down the hall. And before people say anything, uh, uh, he, uh, J- uh, Jim Carrey's character did not have a mallet. Uh, in his apartment, the mallet came with within him, within the pants, and he just pulled it out like he was about to uh, drive uh, on the ninth hole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, and meanwhile, I, the and Officer Cowley also makes fun of his pajamas, which is very important for the later scene. Oh, yes, for um, shat- check all his pajamas. Yes, 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 yes. Um, if a man is, if a man, if you see a chunk of pajamas in a crucial scene in the second act, he must be wearing the pajamas in the first act. Well, and just for a second to mention Calloway's quote, he goes, uh, he goes, that's impossible. He goes, no, those pajamas are impossible. Fucking this funny. really happened, and that's a remarkable line because yeah. those were some hideous pants. Um, also, just for a second, I was looking up shit because I'm trying to figure out if this movie has any water. It barely does, but... Water? Like, it holds water, as in the expression, this doesn't hold water. Um, you know, that expression that we're all the time saying. Uh, the actor you're talking about is Peter Rygert, by the way. Rygert, maybe? The co-op? Yep. Uh, previous episodes, Animal House... Uh, he was in that, which we have not done. Oh my god, that's who I remember him from! Yeah, is he the oh. dean? No, 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 He's one of the students. He's, yeah. uh, um, um, his girlfriend is the one that fucked the, the, uh, 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 uh Keith Sutherland's, uh, father's character. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Oh my goodness, he's the one that says, Hey, Otis! Like, like, yes. when they went into the black club and they were fucking like, who the fuck? That's who I remember, that is so cool! I'm gonna just let that lie, that's yeah. exactly who 
Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Have y'all done Animal House? How could we? You haven't. Oh, you can't. No, it's a you masterpiece. Can't. Yeah. You can't. You um, can't. But it's directed by a guy named uh, Chuck Russell, uh, who directed also a previous episode, The Scorpion King and Nightmare on Elm Street 3, which is the one, The Dream Warriors, uh, which is Larry Fishburne in it. Which I think we've done. If not, I've just watched that movie a whole bunch. So we did the first one, which I wasn't there for. Uh, oh, and he did uh, the uh, the Blob, the nineteen eighty eight Blob as well, hmm. uh, and directed the Cuban Pete music video. Uh, Wait, and Ka- so of- so Officer Callaway directed the Cuban Pete music video. Uh, no, the director of this film directed oh. that. Uh, also, future um, episode, I assume, Eraser, uh, the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie mm. as well. Yeah. Yeah. You've yeah. been erased. Yeah. 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 Is that the one where he helps people? No, he erases them. Because I'm going to be erased. I am in the witness protection. So Jim and Cain. I one point get a rail gun. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, Jim's carry. Okay. 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 Uh, pulls him out from his pants, and then he goes back to work. In which we uh, see uh, the nepotism of the nepotisms of. Uh, That's uh, like the uh, eighth time he becomes a mass, though. Like, like, truly, yeah. like the the first half of this movie is just a wave of nonsense, mm. and we're fine with that. Um, we, you, yeah, yeah. Because he he the first time nothing bad happens, and he just wakes up thinking it's all a dream, except for that the cops are investigating the lady. Right. It's the next time that he decides he's going to go out to the club, and he has no money, so he first robs the bank. Well, and the- this is where we get the incredible yellow leisure suit as well. And, and, and yes, and the, as you pointed out before, if we're, if we're, if we're uh, going for context, this is after he shoved the mufflers off the two mechanics' asses. Which they uh, from that, yeah, 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 so... It took them a month to fix my fucking car. I, I understand this scene. Yeah, yeah. Beware getting upsold. He wanted his oil change, and they start claiming he needs a new transmission. I mean, I know my car is probably going to fall apart. Never take it to the dealership. Never fucking take it to the dealership. Come on, man. It's like I, I, going to the belly of the beast. We should also mention here, uh, there's a um, a journalist around here. Um, a- Amy Yazbek, who I'm pretty sure is in previous episode, Army of Darkness. I believe she is. Uh, and she's playing an actress, or a character named Peggy Brandt, who's just working for the local, you know, whatever. Uh, she's also in previous episode, uh, Pretty Woman. A future episode, Problem Child, I would guess. And in uh, she's made Marion in Robin Hood Men in Tights. Yes. 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 She's fucking hilarious in that movie. Sorry. Uh, yes, Beck. Uh, yes, Amy, Beck. Yes, Beck. Yes, Beck. Yes, Beck. Yes, 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 Beck. Yes, Beck. Just, just correcting you on your pronunciation. No, it's fine. She's uh, her and her chastity belt. Yes. Um, and she's in uh, Robin Hood. Uh, sorry, uh, Dracula Dead and Loving It as well. Uh, which is a t- not a great movie, but has one of the best vampire scenes I've ever seen, okay. which I will show the two of them after this movie. Um, at this point, Jim Carrey decides to go back to the club um, wearing his yellow uh, zoot suit. My oh, man. Dude. Iconic suit. <laughs> Iconic. Fucking. No, to, to when he transforms, because like, you mentioned this to me, to us. People in the 90s, yeah. We're emulating the 50s kind of what Casablanca type style. Sure. The vibes, Miami Nights. But something about this suit, and I made this joke, it's a John Mulaney joke. He was dressed like he was a lady going to church in Atlanta. Dude. It, the hat. And even even without the mask, he said often you'd wear it. I'd wear it too. Once. Dude. I would love to have a suit that just makes a statement like this. It doesn't have to be this one. It doesn't have to be yellow. If it was... Uh, so, a million years ago, I played a bowl game in Mobile, Alabama. Mobile, Alabama. And dude, Wait, what was... the fuck were you doing in Mobile? Buying crack? No, I was playing a uh, bowl oh. game. I was in a marching oh, band. We were in okay. the bowl game. Oh, my bad. But there was one of those like suit shops that had a suit and out front it was not like the different cuts it was just the colors they right, had right, every right. fucking color the rainbow and you can bet there was a hat with each of them absolutely and I tell That's you what fabric. dude and again it was like a Crayola box every fucking color and I dig it 
because that's what this is. Yeah. They just chose yellow because his face is green, so the green screen would work against the face. Yeah. Dude, it's fucking electric. Yeah. yeah. It is just and that is the cover and I don't know, I'm sure they made a bad NEC game or something about well, this. There definitely was a mask video game. Did you play it? Oh yeah. No, yeah, yeah, not yeah. if I can remember. On the N64, um, yeah. Um, I, I I will say this: they are some iconic looks, minus the uh, the actual mask of the you know. But the his, it, what 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 he ate, as your uh, students sure. alluded to, um, was this yellow suit. And I don't want to spoil the next one, but I'll I'll mention that he ate. I'll just say he ate that too. Dude. Um, Dress wise, nailing it. Yeah, um, and then this is where it gets the most Looney Tunesy. And like, I know people pick quibbles because the comic is a lot darker. But who gives a shit? This is funny as shit. And well, the comic is like freaking. You know, what's that one falling down? It is, and it reminds me of the original comics of. Um, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, where they're just supposed to be a dark, bitter satire of what's going in comics. But the thing is, they got this right, 100% right. Like, and maybe it's just me being bitter, but post 9 11, all graphic novel shit is so fucking dark. It, it can be Zack Snyder, it can be, hell, Jason Bourne. There's no levity in anything. And so the fact that we watch this, this is a better movie just by the fact that it's fucking funny. Yeah, it's silly and entertaining and, 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 and like, goofy. And, it, and like, I am hoping, I cross my fingers and pray to God that this new Deadpool movie has any levity in it. Because I love those first two. And I'm worried that Disney's going to suck the joy out of anything. I, I, I truly do. And I have some Disney movies I truly love, but Deadpool is not their caliber, man. It is like you're playing Magic the Gathering and someone throws a Yu-Gi-Oh card onto the table. And here's the thing. I'm still optimistic. The fact that they dusted off huge jacked man to play Wolverine. I just hope. And they... They officially announced. Uh, I mean, it's rated R, of course. They I made hope that so. announcement soon. No, no, no. They no, announced no. it. Yeah. Um, uh, no, I just. I'm glad I'm because glad. they could have made it PG-13. Yeah. Like I saw Detective Pikachu that was voiced that as this cute Pikachu of Pokemon, uh, voiced by Ryan Reynolds, and I'm like, I can't. You need to. This little thing needs a cuss because I can't see Pikachu a, 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 with Ryan Reynolds' voice and not hear a motherfucker or fuck. I'm sure there's out the bloopers that we can watch, but like, you know what this is like and in my mind maybe i'm just a, an idiot i hope not you have you're a doctorate doctor i'm doctor idiot i'm an I doctor idiot sandwich um here's the thing man truly chris pratt being the voice of garfield and mario can go fuck himself I, he was. I forgot about Garfield. How he was, was that? funny in Parks and Rec, and How then was... they made him in Guardians, and Guardians is still kind of funny. And then Jurassic Park had no joy. And then you're like, you know who you need to be, Mario. And I know you're married to a Schwarzenegger, but stop. And I mentioned that because we're now about to have all of this. What's this? <sighs> A Chris Pratt cinematic universe? No. I mean, yes, but no. <laughs> well, don't forget about Ryan Reynolds is now the king of the other side of Hollywood. And I just want it to still be Deadpool. I don't want it to be dried out. I don't want it to be... I mean, you brought up other roles he's done where he's had no texture. Hmm. I just hope Disney allows him to have some humor. Um, because, like, okay, I know we're talking about the mask, but the whole point is that we're talking about a superhero who's an anti-hero, and it's all gray area. So, Like, the second Captain America got ripped off on an oil change, he didn't stick a muffler up a man's ass. <laughs> he would have written to the Better Business Bureau. You know what I mean? Like, so the mask is going to be the hero, but he's going to probably still pocket $100,000 of that money. So, check this. Let's, let's talk about this. Yeah, please. because... Because this is where we meet Dor well, we've meet Dorian Tyrell a bit earlier, because he's gonna be robbing this bank, 
and the mask co- comes in and gets there first. And in the process, the cops kill one of Dorian's crew. Dude, the only his black name guy. is the doctor, and he's the black guy. So the he only has black to die. guy. Yeah, he does. He's, he's the only one who actually. Well, not he, not he's one of two people. Actually, he's one of two people in this movie who actually die. Mm. Actually, I'd rather him die than the only brother get a muffle up the ass. I mean, to be fair, yeah. yeah. Do or die. There's no retreat. Um, but no, I, I, I just want to make this point because I know I'll just forget as it relates because we talked about this during the movie too. To our recollection, what was the last best actual comedy movie? And I still couldn't the figure Trump it out. The Trump deposition. No, um... Game Night was pretty funny. Game Night, okay. Um, Matt, I don't. I'm not really sure. I don't really watch a whole lot of movies. Yeah. In, the, in theaters anymore. Most movies I watch are like you know streaming stuff on my Kindle when I'm at the gym. Yeah. Um. I don't know. Um. I want to say. Book smart. If if you guys are not familiar, I definitely. Oh, well, actually, because that I can say that was the only movie, and and, and I'm classified that financially and critically did well. Because there are good comedies that have come out in the past year or two, but I wouldn't. People don't consider them a success. You know. Well, I mean, and we talked about this, and I'll talk about it again just for half a second. The problem is we expect money, like, to be outrageous in these profits. Yeah, you, okay, so yeah. Adam, the guy from Workaholics, Adam Bamp? Levine. Levine. He mentioned he did a, an action comedy on Netflix. He, it was him and Pierce uh, Morgan. No. James Bond. Morgan? Brosman. And he mentioned, I did it, uh, and he had said that there's no more comedy movies. You need to have, a, and he says, he blames Marvel for that. Because the Marvel movies are essentially an action movie that have comedy elements, and that's thanks to Robert Downey Jr. Well, I mean, I, I will agree with him, but, like, the difference is, to you need to put in, like, $250 million at least to make... 500 million and there's international markets and like they're comedy movies I like in the last decade but very few people saw them like for example I'll give you a few that I truly like what we do in the shadows is funny Um, bridesmaids is funny game night is funny Deadpool is funny Uh, this is the end is funny very funny Um, I think the Grand Budapest Hotel is funny I don't know how many people saw it I saw it on a plane it was great um I like the Paddington movies, but they're not laugh out loud. So I, let's do a laugh out loud. Uh, MacGruber, I think, is funny. But the, okay, people, people didn't think that it was a success. I agree. I fucking love MacGruber. I love Will Forte. Uh, but, the other guys in Girls Trip. Gr- Girls Trip. Okay, it was yeah. Booksmart. Is Booksmart in there? Booksmart, I'd say, is funny. Uh, yep. Um, but all of these movies, we mentioned, I don't know, ten movies that I like. Is the hang okay? I honest to God, the movie. I think, I think the, the only one that counts in the last decade of the Hangover movies is the last the f- one. That was considered a success. No, no, just the other two are older than a decade. Two thousand because it's twenty fourteen. So I think the first one was twenty twelve. Tw- no, the first one was two thousand seven eight because Obama just got elected and I was in Africa. Oh, that was a joke. <laughs> what? I think they referenced Obama in the first one. Third one. You said you can't masturbate. No. Yes. That's the that's the second one. No. But uh, thanks, Obama. You can't masturbate on planes. Yes. I think that was the second it. one. It's been a while. It's but, been a but while. But regardless, yeah. that's why I'm saying they don't count. It's not that I don't like them. It's just that they're more than a decade old. I'm not googling that. <laughs> the last comedy I can recall seeing was The Death of Stalin. That's and, very funny. And that wasn't that was... laugh out loud funny. It's more like make fun of how horrible these people are. Oh, no, are. I did laugh a couple times, but no, I own that one. No, you don't even... This fucking... This probably flew under your radars. They made a History of Earth Part 2. I saw that, but that's a TV show. The Mel Brooks? Yeah. Yeah, it's on Hulu. Why not... Why not movie? 
Dude, I, I'm not arguing with you, but that's not a movie. I know. I, it was a, a series of skits. In the a same, series of skits. A series of skits. Yeah. The first one. The first one. If you really break down the first one, there's no story. And now, Jews <laughs> in space. Dude. I, I have to- brought you these 15... <laughs> Ten! Ten commandments for all to obey. I'm an I'm an Ethiopian Jew. <laughs> the Inquisition. What a show. The Inquisition. Here we go. I bet you're wishing oh my God. that we go away. I used to show that in AP World. Oh God help my me. God. But the Inquisition's here and it's here. To- hey, you Takamata. What, what do you, do you say? say? I just got camp, back camp from the Auto de Fe. Audit of Faye? What's an audit of Faye? It's what you ought to do, but to do anyway. God help me. Oh, sorry. Uh, I will uh, say, of, of those things we mentioned, though, no, I will say, that's... all of them you should watch. Bridesmaid yeah. ma- let me laugh so loud. I've, like, spying You too. shit it in a sink. That's yeah. the okay. Uh, and what um, we do in the shadows might be the most original comedy of the last 20 years. don't get me wrong. Like, I, you got to put, you got to put uh, Edgar Wright in there with his movies with, like, Hot Fuzz, Shaun of the Dead, you know, and, like. Oh, well, and he was supposed to do. Uh, the Marvel movie Ant-Man. Airman that got fired yeah. and then made Drive which is here, here, uh, here. sorry uh, Baby, uh, Baby Driver, Driver which filmed here in Atlanta the movie falls apart but it has a super trooper effect to me which is the first 20 minutes is some of the greatest cinema that's ever been um, well for me I, I'm more of a fan of Edgar Wright's um, editing and yeah. cinematography and his use of music his editing. use of music yeah, the is editing amazing. Kind of, yeah. Um, but yeah, back, back to the mask. I think we were at the scene. Um, did he rob the bank yet? Yeah, he yeah, robbed the bank. We can rob the, the bank yet. Yeah. At guy. this point now, the cops down is... is oh. and, and so he goes to visit Ben Stein, uh, America's comedy... Well, don't, don't, I think you forgot the dance sequence. I was about to say that. I didn't think you were going to say that, but Dude, yeah. Take us through scene. Cuban Pete. Or, yes. No, sorry, uh, Hey Pachuco. Yeah, because he... He uses the money he stole from the bank to rent a limo that's like 30 doors long. And this, com- is, this is where we get the most Tex Avery Chuck Jones cartoon. He um, bribes his way into the club. And when Tina Cameron Diaz is singing, he's going like, he's like Tex Avery. Like, he turn, literally turns his way wolf and whistles. His heart is literally out beating outside of his chest. And then he turns the band at Coco Bongo into a swing band. They start doing Hey Pachuco while he's dancing with. You can't see it, it's my head banging. Hey Pachuco! And meanwhile, the doctor is dying upstairs, and one of the crew points out that the mask who killed. Well, who didn't kill him, but he caused, helped set off the chain of events, led to him dying, and definitely got ahead of them in the bank, is dancing with Dorian's girlfriend in the club, and Dorian and his crew just lose their minds yeah. after the most glorious swing dance sequence of all time. Amazing. Well, and for those of you who are children, uh, first of all, I will say I will recommend this film. Find it. It's good. I own it. That's how we watched it. But It's out there digitally. It's, it's available in this world. However, I can't explain to you, and Matt, you can help me here, how important swing dancing was to the early 90s. Well, it's still a thing. Like, I do uh, this West Coast swing on Wednesdays. Yes, but it's not on the radio anymore. What's when we West were Coast kids, swing? It's, the, uh, it's slightly to the opposite of East Coast swing. Yeah, there's Zoot Suit Riot. Is this like a That's the song from swings? the 90s was. We were here on and the radio. And what was the name of that band? Do you remember? Cherry Pop and Daddies. Was that the one? That they were very subtle. D- the, no, no, no. The, the band was the Cherry I'm sorry. Pop and Daddies. The and the song was uh, Zoot Suit Riot. And which is uh, about when a bunch of Mexicans got killed. Wait, yeah. what's that to do about swing? During, during no, no, World there, War II. There was II. literally an event called the Zoot Suit Riot. And Mexicans wore Zoot Suits and they were shot. That's what it was called. The Zoot Suit Zo- Zo- Zoot, Z O O T. Zoot, what, right. what is that? Zoot, in English? Zoot, right. What is that? Pour out a bottle of beer. A bunch of sailors got pissed at some Mexicans wearing zoot suits because they was using up fabric for the war effort because they beat the hell out of them. And they beat, killed them. Um, but it turned into a real catchy song during the Clinton administration. Um, 
and but like swing became a thing um and there was the uh the the brian setzer orchestra as yeah. well what was their song Do brian remember? seltzer orchestra do you I remember the song? No, I don't. Uh, Ballroom Blitz. Is that a song or a band? No, that, was, that is a song, but that was from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. That was, was from... Oh, my God. My, okay. Um, no, but yeah, swing, swing, swing is good. And uh, I guess Cameron Diaz. Baby, baby, it looks like it's gonna hail. That's the Brian Sets Orchestra. Jump, jive, and whale. Yes. Gonna... Jump a jiving, and you will gotta jump a jiving, and you will away. I guess I haven't yes. swinged in a while. No, no, swing is a dance move. Uh, again, oh, did it's I, from the did 1940s, I, did and I say the 1950s, something? and then the 1990s, because we were all over that. Our president was a saxophone player, so we had to come up for ways for him to be important. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, again, I have nothing. I'm not going to say a bad thing against swing dancing. It's just that in the 90s, it was literally on the radio. Well, that's what you said. People in the 90s were trying to emulate what people in the 50s were doing. And Jim Carrey in his yellow suit, man, baby. Like, that is literally a yellow felt suit suit. I don't know what to tell you. And I will say... It's that I. It, this is the iconic look. It, I bet you, if you've got this on Vudu or whatever, um, pull it up on Amazon. This is what the image is. I will say yeah. his original mask suit, where he's dressed like, God, like he's about to make a Playboy centerfold. Like he, <laughs> he looks like Hugh Hefner, like wearing a lounge suit, like with a smoking jacket. Yeah, that's his original look. That's fucking insane. Yeah. Like, we're if, back to the 90s, baby. If someone, and I would say that's the look of the movie, the suit. Because what happens next, if I'm not mistaken... I mean, all this falls apart. What's your, okay, I'll ask you this then. What's your favorite scene as the mask? Oh, definite... Oh, fuck. Okay, it's... Mm, it's a tie. Mm-hmm. It was, and this is probably going to be yours too. It was the his 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 uh, his Oscar winning performance, okay. and then accepting to, that was we're, mine. We're about to get to that. Yeah. So describe the scene, Nor. Uh, or do you uh, want me did to? Did he get shot? Yeah. Okay, so he got pretend shot, he, and he, then they open fire on him. Right, and as he does. He he, you know, it hurts when you he, get shot. He rubbers around. He yeah. rubbers around he very would... dramatically, very dramatic, as I would when I'm telling Savannah I have a boo boo in my my finger. Um, and he's just, and then he falls onto one of the henchmen's arms, and he starts spitting out kind of like very popular movie lines, but kind of like in its own twist. So from Gone in the Wind, when Homeboy then was like, well, quite. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. He would say, like, well, tell Scarlet, <coughs> I give the damn. You know, that kind of thing. What else did he say? And, and, and don't it, tiny Tim won't be coming home this Christmas. Cool. Yeah, you know, it, it, we're watching it with the subtitles, so I was able to, like, kind of pick to, up. To on the point things. the henchman is crying, right. and Dorian Terrell's like, oh, no, this yeah. is so stupid. And then, Hold me close, Red. And then, and then in, uh, uh, in the fashion of Mr. Scythe. <laughs> <laughs> to answer you, to your whole letter. Tell my love, brother. Yeah. Oh my God! No, the tiny, the tiny Tim, the tiny Tim got me every Christmas. Me, me and Savannah watch the Muppet Christmas Carol. A previous episode. Favorite. Yeah, and my that, favorite. That scene when Tiny Tim and and uh, his dad Kermit are walking and they're singing. Oh, it gets me every time. Anyways, I uh, do. He, well, we see. He gets an oh, yeah. Academy Award, and in front of the screen is the Mystery Science Theater people applauding, and Dorian, the bad guy, is just looking at him, looking at the crowd, looking around like, "What right. the fuck is happening?" And just pulls a gun. Like, <laughs> no, no, he was like, "You." Love 
like me. You really, really you just necessarily necessarily feel. Feels. Yeah. But I just like the idea that you could end someone's comedy bit by pulling a gun on them. Like, just like, he's like, you like me. And, and in the background, as Matt said, the goon is losing his mind. And <laughs> Dorian is like, end scene, motherfucker. Doesn't that yeah. remind you of, like, the Universal uh, rides? Kind of 100%. Scenes? Yeah. And then the cops show up. Like, and then cuts to my next favorite scene, which yeah. again I'll let you just des- y'all describe this because y'all the one that fucking keeps singing it. So, <laughs> well, okay, so there's two things going on at the same time. Uh, the first thing that we get is that uh, the cop is tracking down Stanley Ipkiss, and he shows up at Stanley's door. And Stanley has a coat closet filled with cash, which is just delightful. Yeah, because one of, during the fight in the club, someone she- shoots off a part of Stanley's tie that converts back to his pajamas that that um, Detective Calloway likes to make fun of. Yeah. And uh, Dorian then opens up the prize to say whoever can get the mask gets a $50,000. $50,000 pre-Clinton dollars, as you mentioned. Yeah, Clinton bucks, as you would put it. What happened to make inflation like that? They turned directly into the McRib. Now, you see, my economic plan is about supersizing them fries, girl. I'm going to supersize all of you. Did McDonald (laughs) fuck up America? Bill, Bill Clinton no, could so say... Bill Clinton grew up dirt poor. I don't know, yeah. From, and his, uh, his reward... Like, there, there's scenes of him jogging and just ending up and getting a McMuffin. Because, I mean, he just grew up poor. Like, he has a scar from his white trash dad throwing a chair at him um, on his, like, on his chin. Because, you know, it is what it is. You know, I met Bill Clinton once. Did you know? Yeah, it was in, uh, he was in Ethiopia with uh, Chelsea and I don't know. You're a black uh, person. Vladimir. Well, check this out. Did, did right? he try to seduce you? No. He stopped and looked. So it was me and my brother. I was 16. My brother was uh, two. If, uh, he's four, 12. Yeah, you, and math. And so he stopped. We he were staying at the same hotel that my dad's boss worked at. And then he was just like, he looked at us. He was like, huh. Y'all ain't from here. Because <laughs> we were in Ethiopia and we were kind of larger or <laughs> whatever. But I had a lovely conversation with Chelsea Clinton. Yeah. Along with Ted Danson was there with them. And y'all seen the movie Independence Day? Of course. Yep. The, the, the president. Bill, Bill Pullman. Pullman. The president's wife. Mary uh, McDonald. I met her too. If you, if that's what I don't know, what her she name was in is. Battlestar Galactica, the show I like watched when I was in college. I like that show. Yeah, um, it's a real experience. I, 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 I've met one president. I met Jimmy Carter. <gasps> oh. uh, though I only had to go down the street to that. True. Yeah. Oh, I attended. Uh, I, I saw him at the Carter Center. Uh, I attended. I attended his Sunday school class. Did you shake his well, hand? No. Uh, he's a, he's good at the Sunday school stuff. Yeah. R- I, 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 God, I don't want to say R.I.P. I was gonna say that, but he's still he, he's alive. He's alive, but he's in God hospice. bless him. He's not in good God, state. when he said he's been in hospice for almost a year, six months. Uh, again, months, I want to cross my fingers because I love the man. He's he's one of the good ones. Like truly, I don't know how many presidents I'd have been sad for, but like he's a good dude. <laughs> like truly, he's a good dude. He's not in good health. Well, His Gar- wife Garfield. died what, uh, six months ago. Yeah. Is recording. Uh, anyway, I shook both of their hands, and so it's nice to say hi. And yeah. anyway, um, at this point, we are up to Stanley Ipkiss meeting um, everyone's favorite Nixon speechwriter. Hi, I'm Ben Stein. I'd like to Bueller, and I'm not really a psychiatrist, but Bueller. you're treating me like I'm your psychiatrist. I'm going to humor you. Bueller. I'm going to hold up a book that I didn't write until. The- the mask we wear, and uh, you know what? Jim's gonna act circles around me, so uh, I'm just gonna look here and tired. And that's when we figure out the mask only works at night. He kind of looks like a koala. <laughs> Could you imagine? No, no. I want to. I want to live on bamboo. Yeah. Um. 
So I guess he, well, no, uh, I guess from when he went to, so the bank got robbed, he went back, <laughs> he went back to work, confronted his nepotism uh, uh, Dude, boss. I want to say in the history of these movies, he's up there with uh, Rachel from Friends. Jennifer Aniston telling off her boss in office space. Fuck you! I, you know what? 14 pieces of flair, if that's the minimum? Dude, I have the flair, so... Oh, you don't have to use such a language. Well, no, like, he said he's gonna tell his dad, he's, he's treating the bank like his piggy bank, and... Some report something from the IRS about something he that he did, and then he was like, whatever. So he 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 got his balls back at work. Yeah, the Netflix even though stuff, he yeah. was the one that fucking took the money, <laughs> the um itself. And I guess Cameron Diaz character just pulls up looking for uh, the mask, and Stanley he's like, yeah. the mask and then he was whoever. just like, yeah. I do like the scene here between the two of them where they're looking at the the weird, terrifying pollution cloud. Oh, from the and from Landfill Park. Yeah, because um, Ipkiss convinces her that he knows the mask. He even taught him to dance. Yeah, they went and to college. They're gonna, he's going to introduce them. So they go to land, and Ben Stein had told him to go as Stanley and the mask. At this point, he just wanted him to leave. Mm. Well, but the whole thing is that. It's it's very I guess Freudian, right? You have the id, the ego, the super ego, and so the mask is supposed to be the id, and Ipkiss is supposed to be repressed, and so all of it's coming out at once, and so we have this scene where Stanley is doing okay, like he's really doing okay, but. The mask shows up because the second things get uncomfortable, he doesn't have an answer, so he turns into the mask. And at that point, she should have figured out that they're the same person because he runs behind the bush. You see lightning come down, and he comes out as this this hellacious Parisian stereotype. Parisian? Yeah, the, yeah, the, the stripy, French. Fr- the stripy French. Okay, I just I was I, I'm dumb. I didn't know Parisian. I, I thought French. Okay, sorry. Okay, so. First of all, Pepe Le Pew. no, no, you, Matt is one hundred percent right. Nor I want you to explain for a second what you thought the fuck was happening if you didn't get the French thing. I knew, I know, I knew by the movie he was acting French. Ah, but what did you say? Peruvian, Parisian, Parisian, Paris. Oh, see, Par- I mean, I mean, he's got the stripy shirt, the beret. All he needs to be doing is carrying a baguette. So, oh, the, the, or the, having a skunk tail. But no, I'm, I'm just saying, like, it's, it's more, it's more in line with uh, me not being versed in, in world vocabulary. Yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah the, he doesn't need, he doesn't need a skunk tail. He's when he's that horny. <laughs> True. So for, for uh, Ramadan this year, I'm going to get uh, nor a word of the day calendar uh, just to help you with that vote. Okay. No, Thank I will you. say the the part about this to me, which is interesting, is he's doing well as Stanley, and then the second he feels like like pearl clutchingly awkward, he's he like turns into the mask. Oh. The mask, because at the end, the if we're writing a script here, which we are, she falls in love with Stanley. How can you tell? The mask is an asshole, but the mask is supposed to be pure id. Like, you're engaged, I'm married. If I turned back into my 13 year old self, my wife would be very unhappy. Like, and that's what this is. Like, the 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 mask is what you think romance is like when you're hormonal and 15 yeah right like that's what it's supposed to be and so she's falling in love with a real person and the second things get like go tits up he's like you know what i could be i could be saucy and french because the french (laughs) they can seduce anyone like and she kicks him in the balls i don't understand i can't even do it oh my god she's being coy Um. and this is when we get the greatest musical number that film has ever had, which is Cuban Pete. And that fit. 
And he ate. Dude, he ate. And by the by, this was a music video that not only exists in the world, but I saw on MTV. Like this is really? dude, this kicks ass. Um, they call me Cuban mm-hmm. Pete. I'm the king of the rumba beat. When I shake my maracas, they go cheek cheeky boom, boom cheek cheeky boom. boom. And like he does this thing where he goes lights, and they cut to the the cars, and they come Cause, back, cause and he's in this like he's in his, a cartoon. Yeah. This is a Muppet. This is the Muppets all of yeah, a sudden. Yeah, because um. Galloway and his partner Doyle have staked out the park to arrest Stanley. They've got like 30 cops waiting outside the park for backup. And he proceeds to lead them all in a gigantic musical number. And this is a... Okay, now, Nora, we've we've yelled at each other. We've hated each other for this before. Huh? This is so much better than Space Jam as far as Looney Tune movies go. Like we've talked about Space Jam before. We've talked about both Space Jams before. But this, to me, is what Looney Tunes should be. Yeah, no, 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 no. Like, I don't know if I mentioned it, but there's an element of who framed Roger Rabbit to this yeah. that it, it's done so tastefully and beautifully. I mean, he's the hottest guy in Havana. In Havana! Chick, chicky, boom, chick, chicky, boom, chick, chicky, boom. <laughs> I need to I need to really learn that song. Um but no, um I I mean I'm not dying on a hill where I say Space Jam is better than the mask. Um but it it, it is cool to get that at least that silliness cuz I do get, get a lot of bugs money when he's trying to like when he's put into that situation Look, type man, thing. Yeah. Here's the thing. Like it's like Bugs Bunny no. about to be well conduct an opera type deal, you know what I mean? But he, but here's the thing. Like and honestly, if there's an emotional core to these movies, I grew up with the the Jordan version. I've seen the brain, the LeBron James version. Neither of them have anything close to carry. All right, but again, those were kids' movies. This was not a kids' movie. <laughs> Dude, who frames Robert Robert well, was that a, a kid? kid no, 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 no. Shut so your whole mouth. Some of the, a kid, a, 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 Dude, a kid in, would notice some of the jokes in this one, like, I will unleash my croissant upon your pate. I, I, I didn't know. And he that. pulls out a condom out of his pocket. But you say that. However, you watch that final version, like the final basketball game in the newest Space Jam, and there's the nun from the nun. There are kids from Clockwork Orange. There's seven penguins from Penguin in the Batman movies. Who is that for? It's not the kids. I tell you what. You know what what is for kids? Cuban Pete. Fuck you. Christ on a cracker, man. This this is the funny thing. I, so, okay, let's go back to the mask. I think, honestly, it was majority of the movie that carried it was Jim Carrey. Because there's a point, and I guess we can go from, from this dude, scene. If, if he could sink hoops... Dude. Oh, yeah. If yeah, he could yeah. hit threes, if he was the next there needs Steph to Curry. Be, no, I think there needs to be a hockey space jam. You know what I mean? Like, what, what if there was a Tiger Wayne, Woods space jam and it was like uh, a golf space jam? Nah. Well, mm, mm, putt putt. Mm. <laughs> It'd be involved. But, um, I mean, just like people keep saying, but what if we did this with the Muppets? What if we did this with the Looney Tunes? And it was just like, no, yeah, but what no. if we did Angels in the Outfield, but it was the Looney Tunes? I honestly, I honestly <laughs> think like uh, the Looney Tunes back in action, that was a really fun movie. It was campy. It was I mean, meta. it was stupid, but fun. It was stupid, but it was fun. Yeah. And do you know who made that movie great? Brendan Fraser. You know what I mean? Well, Same first thing. of all, Brendan Fraser could be in Can do no wrong. Don't make him a whale anymore. Just, just, just do can't. random. As a as a person who just lost like 100 pounds, I cannot watch that movie. I refuse to watch that movie. Like 100 pounds? I lost like 100 pounds, yeah. I can't watch that movie. By the way, uh, Nor, sexy? Oh, no. It's, you can Not see available. my face. You He's can... well engaged. No. Uh, oh, oh the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Back off, bitches! Um, uh, for for people in Uganda, whoever are, just, <laughs> so, I've lost you know, two pounds, um, ladies. But um, but no, it, it's all about who carries a movie. That's why Jim Carrey is playing the big bucks. I can't think about ninety four. 
Who, uh, the comedic actors in 94. Who could play this? Mel Gibson? No. I mean, um, it would be a yes. much more misogynist movie. Uh, 94. Who am I thinking of? Who was a big actor in no, no. Or 80s? Okay, let's do 80s. Um... <laughs> You want me to help you, John Gene, Cusack? No, 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 no! I was gonna say Sid. Uh, Gene ha- Gene Wilder. Uh, Dead. Well, now, not not in 1994. <laughs> Dude, I'm joking. Uh, wait, wait, when did he die? He died recently. Not, Denzel Washington could not do this. I mean, obviously. Uh, uh, no, it's it, dude. It's Adam Sandler. It's Jim Carrey. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was, oh, I was oh, saying. Oh no, no! Oh god! Uh, it's a Wayne's brother. A Wayne's brother could have Marlon. Done Marlon, who's the the one that does the more. The, the one could hold down the, the, a movie. The, the, the movie, yeah, yeah. I, I, I honestly, you know what? If there was a, the Wiz version of the mask, I would want. Yeah. If you turned up the gunplay by twenty percent, it's a Jackie Chan movie. Yes. Because do they shot? No, yeah. Because Jackie Chan never fires a gun. Or no, the movies, but they have to fire it at him. So he has to do him. more actual dodge. dodging. Yeah, I love, yeah. Because it's a, it's a lot of physical comedy. Because a lot of the movements, even in the salsa If there was no scene, guns and it was slow motion, it's a Steven Seagal it, movie. Oh, somebody stop me. And then he takes a nap. Smoking. I have a fucked engine. Uh, Steven Seagal. Um, he has a dungeon and a dance hall album. <laughs> oh, dude. Something don't bad. listen to him sing about Punani for 20 minutes. Something bad. Nope. 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 No um, good. I'd rather listen to... Uh, anyways. Um, so, At one point here, he, uh, he gets the mask. Dorian gets the mask. Because, yes. Because uh, the reporter... For, how does he get the mask? The reporter sells him out. Yeah, because the police are after him from that That's chase. Right. And old girl from the, the, the Princess Bride... Excuse me, uh, Robin Hood Man in Tights. Um, Mowage. Mowage um, sells him out for that 50 grand, that big boss. And then big boss puts on a mask. And then... How did you describe him, Matt? He turns into... He's got the voice of Tim Curry from previous episode Legend and the facial deformities, the character Rick from previous episode Danger Island. You know, big Neanderthal cheekbones and brow. Green. Uh, just looks like the dude. Uh, for me, if the guy from Jeepers Creepers was gr- uh, green. And doing a lot of steroids. And cousins with... Yes, okay. Um, and, and then he... Then you know he bas- they they take the money back from Stanley's apartment and chuck him at Kellerman out of out of a car with a mask in his clothes. Yeah. So now he's in jail. And then he was able to escape jail by his Oscar delicious dog. That dog is so good. Like this scene where the dog is able to jump up, you know, but navigates through the bars onto the desk. Picks up a slice of cheese and then puts the cheese back and then goes to the guard. And how the facial expressions of this dog while he's getting these keys from his dogs should have won this dog an Oscar. Uh, Dog Oscar. uh, Dog Oscar, you know. And then uh, he gets the mask back on him and it's like it's the same. I mean, it's the same statuette. It's the same, yeah. yeah. It has a dog bone. Like he's holding up a bone. Yeah. Uh, I will also just doff my cap to character uh, Doyle, uh, who's the uh, Doyle. Oh, yeah. the the cops like comedic assistant who's just like I'd like that sandwich, Doyle, and then the sitcom music plays. Um, um, yeah, Callaway is wound too tightly, and Doyle's kind of goofy. They balance each other out. I mean, he's like. Uh, I don't even know where I heard this from, but he's the superintendent Shalmers. Like he exists in another movie. So you just need to add Keep people who have part. nonsense. I mean, and, mean me, and, and I just want to mention, Oh, go ahead. And meanwhile, Tina has been recaptured by Terrell and his goons. Well, and I was going to just add, like, that's the reason he needs the dog back. The dog who has a very sad, like cut to commercial break where he's like, Cowering under some garbage cardboard, but like Tina's being kidnapped, and so yeah. 
you know, Ipkiss needs to escape. And so the dog, like, performs a miracle yeah. um, just to get out. And where she's escaping from, for those who don't know, if, if I'm not mistaken, her frame Roger Rabbit, the, like, the climax scene was filmed, like, in a newspaper prep. Same thing here with uh, the mask. So I, I, I can see that kind of an homage, if that type of Looney Tune vibe uh, to it. Because Looney Tunes, and even Disney for a snippet, was both in... Uh, who framed Roger Rabbit, which is pretty cool. Yeah, because we I don't think we mentioned this earlier, but Dorian is a number two to another mobster named Nico. Yep. And he's this whole and ne- and he's trying to usurp Nico and this is the what power he's gonna struggle do. part. Yeah. yeah. And this is what he's gonna in the Coco Bongo Club is a, is something is Nico's property. And so his plan is basically to rob and blow up the Coco Bongo. And like the whole thing here is at this point not only has Ipkiss escaped, but he's taken the detective along with him in the car as his hostage, I guess, to observe. But, like, that literally comes to... I think he wanted Callaway to actually call the cops once he went into the club. That's a strategy. Uh, But it also doesn't matter, because in the end, the mayor shows up anyway and covers his ass. Um, But, I mean... Again, I guess if I'm the film guy, this is called crowded scene uh, satire, where every character in the entire movie shows up at the end, and so we need everyone to show up. And at this point, which we haven't really mentioned, but Dorian now has the mask, and he looks like a middle Mm -hmm. linebacker or professional wrestler. Yeah. (laughs) Which Um... is funny, because so many of these effects look pretty good. Uh, Dorian doesn't, though, in my opinion. This is where it looks the worst. Yeah, they found that uh, they could have done a little bit better on his. This looks terrible, and when uh, Jim Carrey swallows the bomb, looks awful. Well, check this out. We are forgetting our Oscar-nominated dog, who Baxter, gets the mask. Gets the mask. God help me. This is delightful. And the problem is, I say these things, and I'm sure that's what exactly the test audience said when they made the sequel, because the sequel is unwatchable. Um, the sequel featured Jamie Kennedy, for those of you who don't know who Jamie Kennedy and is. And sperm with f- masks on them. Uh, Future uh, episode Malibu's Most Wanted. Yes. Uh, he was in the Scream franchise, as well as there was a show in the uh, post-9-11 Fox era between Mad TV um, called The X... Uh, factor? No, not X Factor. factor. No, 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 no. It was, it was, it was an experiment. Ex, the Jamie Kennedy experience. Yes, sir. It, 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 for those of you who don't know, it was similar to Punked, which is similar to getting pranked, but you know. Getting, um, hopefully no. not getting shot. There isn't there isn't any old prank show. It's called okay. Jackass. J- joked. J- uh, uh, impractical, Jackass. Impractical Jokers, but that's the new one. It's literally Jackass. Hi, my name is Blank, and this is Jackass. Oh. Um, <laughs> but the dog gets a mask, and then the back. And, well, and so the and end P- of this and is pees that on a guy. The end of this is Dorian as the Dorian mask is trying to blow up the whole thing. Um, the, the, the club, the Coco Bongo club that we've been at the whole time. And so now, um, and he wants to kill in the process Cameron Diaz, right? She can do no wrong. And so at this point, everything is falling apart. Um, we have Jim Carrey who's there. She convinces him that she wants one last kiss, but not as the mask, as Dorian. And she has escaped, like freed her leg, which has been tug taped down, to kick it across the bar. And Jim Carrey jumps across the bar to put on the mask and saves the day. He ends up eating the dynamite bomb. And again, this is very Looney Tunes. Yeah, it's like, you know, when someone eats a, a when Jerry or whoever eats a sub and they just like extend their bottom lip and then they, well, they sorry, drop the difference it. is when Jared eats a sub, he then looks at child pornography I and goes said to jail Jerry, for Jerry or Scooby, Tom and Jerry. I didn't say Jerry. You mean Shaggy? Jared? Shaggy, one of the motherfuckers. I didn't say Jared. I say Jerry. From Another white guy. Did I say, did I, did I say Jared from from somewhere? You said Jerry, and I thought you said Jared. I Tom and Jerry. That. Okay, I can see that. I can see that. Okay. Um, eat fresh. Uh, eat 
It's so deliciously, terrifyingly fresh. Um, anyway, at this point, you know, there's gun shit. At one point, um, after f- dressing up like he's in a uh, gangster film, Jim Carrey has the mask, frees Cameron Diaz. Oh no, Dorian has a knife. He paints on this like palm tree a flush tab, flushes Dorian down the turlet as one does. He Bob Ross did, didn't he? Yeah. And, and to make absolutely certain the knife goes down the, the, the pipe blade down. That's what that was? Yeah, he no, had a switchblade, and he flushes him down the drain. You see you the knife pops went, up and goes straight down again. Do you think he went down to Toontown like Michael Jordan did Dude, in Space Jam? Dude, you <laughs> He's... <laughs> And then he meets Bob Hoskins going, how you doing? This is a happy little knife embedded in in your head. That's right. Um, And then uh, the cop wants to arrest everyone, including Ipkiss. And the mayor goes, look, I saw it. Dorian was the mask the whole time. And, you know, since he's the mayor, I guess he gets carte blanche. Um, and then we cut to the bridge where they're about to throw the mask overboard. And the office guess, pervert, yeah. Yeah. as you call him, and Milo both go for it while Stanley and uh, Tina make out. Yeah. And the whole thing is like, Stanley goes, look, this is me. And if I throw this mask away, the mask is gone forever. And they kiss anyway. Well, I mean, you get Freudian. If the mask is his id... And Stanley is a super ego because he's so because he's so nice and helpful to everyone, even though people aren't nice to him back. The whole whole arc is him rebalancing, isn't the ego balancing the id and super ego? Oh no, you're right. I mean, I think that's what's exactly happening here. I don't want to get into too much the theory of the mask, but I I was gonna say don't go there, Matt, but it makes sense. As in, anyways, I don't want to miss it, but it amplifying, uh, it's like the super sol- soldier serum. It amplifies who, who you truly are. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, Stanley Ipkiss becomes a Tex Avery cartoon. Dorian becomes a thug. And I don't know, this, have a sequel where Calloway gets a mask and becomes Dirty Harry. What would you become, Matt? Uh, I don't know. I don't know, and I wonder, sometimes wonder if I want to know. Mm-hmm. What would you call Nick? I'd be Hunter S. Thompson immediately, just like fast, quick, smart, kind of a stony writer type. Be like, you don't understand, man. Like, they're coming to get us those dragons. And you're just like, what? Dragons? And they're just, I guess, dragons? Just dragons, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm an award-winning teacher, but what if I was, like, 20% stranger? (laughs) Like, I don't know what's a teacher. Mm. You know what? Here's the the, the fact of the matter. We're done. Nor, what's your final thoughts? You know, uh, very often do we do good movies, and I noticed for the good movies, our discussions, like we push through them and I'm glad we watched this together and because I, I, I needed a laugh. We all needed a laugh. And watching this just reminded me of the good old, good old times where, where, where comedy, um, it, it, it played it safe, but also it teetered a line. Yeah. This was delightful. It's fun and goofy and colorful. So a lot of the times when we do these kinds of movies, I get distracted. I do a lot. I watch these movies often once or twice just to make sure I get them in my head. I couldn't look away. Yep. Like, that's the problem here. Like, this movie is entrangling. Uh, I mean, there are problems. It slows at points. It drags in the middle. It's a problem with a lot of comedies. But this movie is tight. And the ends, it, it just feels funny. It feels thought out. And how do I even put this? Every so often there's a comedy you can't put aside and you can't recast. I can't imagine Naked Gun with anyone else. They're making I, it with Le, uh, Liam Neeson. And it's going to be terrible. I'm sorry. I'll watch it when it comes out and maybe I'm wrong. I, I'll, I'll admit it if I'm wrong when it comes out. But, like, you can't do it with Wayne's World. You can't do it with Austin Powers. 
Like sometimes there's a co- look, you can't do it with black dynamite. I just I I, I think about these uh, uh, bridesmaids uh, like sometimes comedies are written for specific people at a specific moment. That's exactly what this is. I I love this movie. I think it's funny. I'm I there was a while where I hadn't seen it, mm. and then I dusted it off, and I was so happy I did. They don't make movies like this. Nope. And they won't make them again because comedy changes. And yet, if I showed this to someone my age or I watched it with someone 20 years younger, I think they'd still laugh. Absolutely. Um, But we'll see. I don't know. Uh, As part of this month, we're all doing renewals. We're rewatching. We're redoing things. Uh, So far, we've done uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Coming up in two weeks. But next week, we're doing Romeo plus Juliet again. And then after that, at the end, the anchor of this month. Is Jamie Kennedy in the Romeo plus Juliet one with Leonardo DiCaprio? God, I hope not. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he is. <laughs> no, I'm so, so he's Verona's most wanted? You can see Nick is in agony there. No, I was going to say that's the best. Like, that's I fucking like that. funny. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, the Anchor, The Hammer is my movie, which is Batman 89. So this month, as we renew movies we've done from our first 100, since we are rapidly approaching number 500. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for doing what you do to keep us on the charts. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for sharing. And please do, because eventually... We might just do these for just us. So if you want to keep listening to us, keep tuning in. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye, guys. Myopia Movies is a podcast production of Dude Letter Podcasting and is produced by Nick Hoffman. It is edited by Nerd and Daniel Suttis and is hosted by Nick Hoffman with production assistance by Matthew Quinn, Daniel Suttis, and Nerd the theme song is Surf Shimmy by Kevin McLeod from Incomptech.com. Licensed under the Creative Commons by Attribution for License, Creative Commons slash licenses by slash 4.0. Thanks. Thank you.